I really like gold. I think gold, uh, when we look at it from the super long, long point view, let's just go back to, uh, uh, this is the weekly chart. So I like that we've got uh, multiple bull flags. We have a rally here, a bull flag, and then it, it's rallied up. There's all kinds of different bull flags within here, but this is another really nice bull flag rallying from just a, a couple months ago. It is pointing to 2650, 2750 still. Uh, it did poke to new highs a week or so ago, and then it's pulled back a bit. But the pullback that we saw really has to do with what I just mentioned to you, Andy, which is when there is panic selling, when people are afraid, they dump everything. And so as in the last couple of weeks, we've seen the VIX shoot up. People have been scared because everybody piles into the Magnificent Seven. They all do the same thing. And when they crash, they all panic. And so there was panic in the stock market seen by the VIX. And as the VIX shoots up, we, we even saw the fear hit the gold market, pull gold back. Yep. Uh, and so that that's the problem is, and that's the problem with a bear market is even a good asset like gold, when there is panic, people don't care. When you're scared, you just, you run. Yep. And uh, so that's what that is. I think this pullback in gold is just kind of shaking things up. I do think gold has still got really nice upside potential. I think silver um, on the weekly chart as well has, has a very nice upside. I think silver could be 36 or um, $38 dollars. Um, uh, and now it's going forward. This has got a beautiful run to the upside. It's got a beautiful bull flag. It's flagging in the opposite direction of the trend. So the trend here was up. It's supposed to flag in the opposite direction. And then yeah. it should continue up to $36, $38 per ounce. What's going on, Chris? How are you doing? I'm good, Andy. How are you? Doing good. Just uh, haven't talked to you in a little bit. Just wanted to uh, have you on, get your perspective. It looks like, and I want to get your perspective on this, that the general market might be rolling over. What are the charts saying? What do you think? Yeah, there's definitely a lot going on in the markets. There's a, it's, everything's kind of haywire right now. When I look at all my different charts and what different assets are doing and money's flowing out of the big magnificent seven and the markets are tanking, but the small caps are skyrocketing on the same day. Uh, you know, there's panic selling in the VIX, yet the small caps are shooting higher. I mean, there's so much disconnect right now. And everybody's like, I, I don't I don't know what's going on. I need to figure it out. What's what's happening? And to me, the reality is if you if there's a mess, no one can really figure it out. We just have to let the dust settle. And uh it's not something you can't figure everything out. And sometimes the best is on the sidelines, which is where we are right now. But let's take a look at the charts real quick and I'll Kind of show you my take on the major indexes here. Um, long story short, uh, if we look at it from a few different levels, Andy, this is the weekly chart of the SP 500. And to me, the key to understanding what strategy you need to be in and, and, and the overall underlying trend, I like to look at the stock market. Like we've got a rising tide, a bullish phase. We're going to have times where the market is in a bearish phase, which was 2022. And we are still in a very strong uptrend on the weekly chart. Now, we haven't seen, obviously, price pull back over the last three weeks. Uh, it's got people nervous. Uh, but when we look at the, the shorter term price action and say we just look at the daily chart of the SP500, we can see we really had a pretty nice trend here uh, for the last little while in the SP500. We've had a nice move up. The markets here have lost their momentum. We've got a sell signal in the market, and it looks like the market could potentially go into a deeper correction um, going forward. So we've definitely lost a lot of this, um, the strength in the market. The Magnificent Seven have kind of fallen. They've had a very sharp pullback. Uh, so the longer term trend is still up. From a shorter term analysis, we have kind of red bars in the market right now. And red bars just tell us that the money flow doesn't know where it's going. It's completely random. Um, green bars mean we have, you know, cycles in favor, trends in favor, money flows in favor. And right now, as I mentioned, it's uh, it's a very mixed bag of we got panic selling on the VIX. So the fear index is up yet. No one's buying put options. They're not actually betting on falling pricing. They're dumping large caps, moving into small caps. Uh, and when when things don't make sense, sometimes the best thing to do is is step aside. So I am nervous. I do feel like the stock market is very close to a major top. Um, I think it's topping this year. I, I would, I don't know when exactly, but overall, the key is you got to follow these trends. We were long the markets really just until about a week ago um, uh, in the SP 500 and the NASDAQ. We got out a, a little while earlier up near the highs. 
But um, that's kind of the the market in a nutshell is uh, short term. You, we don't want to be holding stocks right now. Yeah. So a couple of things that you touched briefly upon, you had the um, the Russell 2000, their small caps, really a lot of money flowed into that. And my question is, is why or what would you suspect that as? And then it seems like they also dumped, if you would, um, I believe it was yesterday, if my memory serves me correctly. Um, yeah, what happened? Or yeah, there it is. It just shot up in July. Yeah, so I, I think there's I think there's a few things that I play here, Andy. I think um I mean I, I I think this more recent pop is more so like, you know, Trump's talking about tax cuts and all that stuff, which generally helps small businesses. We've seen it, we saw this when Trump got in originally many years ago. We saw stocks want to take off because of tax benefits. Um also um, money is flowing. It's it's rotating out of large caps and it's trying to go somewhere else. And so um, if if Trump is likely to win, and you know, if everybody's falling off the radar, um, then there's conviction. When people know what's going on, they're more confident. So that could create money to go into the small caps. It's got the tax benefit. Money's rotating out of the large cap. Now it's got to go somewhere else. So people are moving into the small cap stocks. Uh, and we're talking about interest rates potentially, you know, have topped and maybe start, we start to see a quarter basis point cut and that's bullish on the stock market as well. Now, overall, like when we look at the the level here of the Russell 2000, just draw a line across here. I mean, it really is struggling through this top that we saw in 2021. Um, we've actually seen this type of price action, like where we see the Russell 2000 hold its ground and then it has a quick squeeze up and then it, it sells off very dramatically. It's been kind of doing a very similar type of price action right now, squeezing up. And what this is, is a lot of times people become really bullish on aggressive stocks just before they top. And so I have a feeling we could actually see this market top out very soon within like a week or two, and this could roll over. And if we were to go back and take a look at the weekly chart of the Russell 2000, and we go back to the 2008 market top, we had a very similar type of price action, which the, you can see this upper wick where price consolidates and then small caps become in favor. Everybody piles in and then they dump out and sell off. And so we've, so we saw this before. This was the 2008 market top and it broke down. So we fast forward to today. We have a very similar type of price action where we have, um, we've got this breakdown. We've kind of have this price consolidating and now it's squeezing up. And I think we we're going to potentially break down. So. The next few weeks, I think, are going to be very critical. Does the stock market, do the Magnificent Seven recover, or is it kind of lights out and now things are about to run out of speed and the small cap stocks are getting the love right now, but it's going to be very short-lived. So that's what we're we're looking for, looking to see what unfolds there. Yeah. Now, you're also, again, you are uh, have been on record, and I share your thesis about the stock market rolling over, if you would, sometime this year. And we're actually, correct me if I'm wrong, are we setting that up for uh, a historical, traditional negative time, I guess, is what I'm there. Yeah. Talk to me about that. Is is August and September historically negative for stocks? Yeah. Usually we see selling kind of kick into gear. We see the market really sell off till almost the last week of October. So we're kind of, you know, we're getting a little bit of a summer squeeze in small cap. Absolutely. Usually there's a little summer bounce. Uh, but obviously, the, we usually see a standout low on the chart, you know, about the second or third week in October. Uh, so overall, seasonality wise, I think the markets are running out of speed and they're about to start uh, heading lower. And, um, you know, if we take a look at this this recent price action, this kind of what I call a stage three topping phase, which is small caps have this huge blow off phase and then they go into this big complacency move, um, which is more or less just a, a, a test of these highs and a, yep. potentially a double top. Then we go into something much bigger. And I think you and I uh, looked at this potentially last time you and I spoke, which there's four stages to the to the stock market. And if you were to scratch out the Magnificent Seven, the heavy, the tech heavy, and just take equal weighted um, index like the SP500, the Russell 2000, and even the, the IWC, which are the micro caps, that's, so that's the majority of the stocks getting rid of the Magnificent Seven. You actually have this stage three topping phase. And after this, once it runs out, we go into usually a major bear market, a financial reset. Um, 2008 was the great financial reset. 2000 was the tech bubble. 
who knows what they're going to call this one, the AI bubble. I don't know, but right. we won't know till it's done. But generally, we're going to get into some pretty ugly times when this runs out of speed. And this is why I'm on here with you is because I want people to understand that there's stages through the stock market. When we start a stage four, it could be like the, the average is like it takes like seven years or so to recover from a bear market. Now, some of them take 16 years, others take 10 years, some of them take three years. I feel like we're setting up very similar to a 2000 tech bubble where it's going to take, uh, you know, the SP 500 many years, six, seven years to recover. That's a long time of, of losing your capital and trying to claw back uh, to, to, to make it back. So um, I kind of feel like this is where we are in this stage and, and to kind of carry over, because I know you want to talk about um, uh, precious metals here too, is, whoops, let me just go to the cycle here. Um, this is when we tend to see industrial goods do very well, precious metals like gold and energy stocks. Industrial stocks are near all-time highs, precious metals like gold at all-time highs, energy stocks flirting with all-time highs. This is what happens just before the stock market tops out. Unemployment's starting to rise. This yellow cycle in the background is an economic cycle. So we're right in this topping phase. We're in that perfect storm. That's why we're seeing gold do well and miners are coming to life and, and they're, they're moving higher. So there's definitely a lot of things at play. This is bigger picture. This isn't like the market's yeah. going to roll over this week. This is like looking out the next 12 months. I'm sure the stock market's going to top and we're probably going to be a lot lower from here. But timing it, I mean, I'm not a market timer. I follow price. I follow trends. So I don't care where it goes. We just ride the coattails. Uh, and we can identify if a trend's strong enough to ride or just to ignore it. Um, so that's the, that's kind of how I go about it. Right. Well, um, that's a great chart, actually. It's interesting, too. Um, I don't know if you can pull up a chart of copper and also oil, because they've, they've really taken it on the chin recently, yeah. if you would. Um, and would you say those would be a proxy, if you would, for uh, the overall? I mean, I'm sure it's a proxy for the economy, but just the overall if you would market. Yeah. So, I mean, oil, oil is definitely, it's working its way into this kind of pennant, the apex of this pattern. The overall pattern here was to the downside. And this is a, a consolidation, a pause. Typically the market's going to continue that earlier pattern. So it'll be another leg down, which uh, I, I think we could see $40 per barrel uh, in the future. Uh, oh. It is coiling a lot of power here. So I don't like uh, uh, something that gets into the apex into this like wedge because you start to get these fake outs where it might break to the upside very quickly for a week or two and then reverse and crash or or vice versa. Generally, you don't want something to go to the apex because everybody follows it and the market has a great way of like getting everybody on one side and they think it's breaking yeah. and running and then it quickly flips direction. So it's a, a real crapshoot. It's I would say the odds are to the downside uh, from here and it's testing that lower range right now. Yeah, if we take a look at copper here, and I'll just zoom out to the big picture. Now, this is the weekly chart going way back. We'll see how far back the futures go. Uh, you can see we're definitely, we've had that huge blow off phase. It's had a big move up. Uh, if we draw just a trend line across roughly these highs, obviously we're pushing to that upper limit in terms of every time it gets up here, it seems to run into a big wall of selling, which we have definitely seen. Uh, copper has, has pulled back. And I mean, it, this is a tough one to trade. I'm not a fan of this chart, but overall, I would say it is in a downtrend right now. I think obviously if copper goes down, it could be leading on the economy. Copper is used in a lot of a, a lot of different businesses, especially in, in um, real estate and copper wiring, all that stuff. So if right. it goes down, it can also be kind of that bellwether, like uh, if it's underperforming, that's not a good sign for the future uh, in terms of the economic kind of standpoint. So both of them look, like they're ready for a, a much longer pullback. Oil is down at the low. The bias is pointing to lower prices. Copper looks like it just had a top. So at, at best, I would think copper will like hold its ground and trade sideways for a year or so, but it can very easily sell off. If we if we zoom out to the picture, if we go back to the 2008, uh, you can see what happened after it topped out. I mean, it completely crashed and sold down. And that was the last time we got into a stage four. And a stage four decline, a bear market, is when there's just forced liquidation, margin calls, people are going broke, companies going bankrupt, unemployment starts to skyrocket, people are scared. And even if they have a good investment, even if it's gold or silver or miners, they dump them. And so we could be going into another stage yep. four type decline. And it'll it'll wipe out prices of most assets, which is why it's important not to like buy and hold. 
um, simply because it can really get wiped out uh, during one of these phases. Yeah, I would agree from experience. <laughs> um, let's talk about gold. Gold looks like it's uh, very, very firm here. Yeah, I really, I really like gold. I think gold, uh, when we look at it from the super long, long point view, let's just go back to uh, uh, this is the weekly chart. So I like that we've got uh, multiple bull flags. We have a rally here, a bull flag, and then it, it's rallied up. There's all kinds of different bull flags within here, but this is another really nice bull flag rallying from just a, a couple months ago. It is pointing to 2650, 2750 still. Uh, it did poke to new highs a week or so ago, and then it's pulled back a bit. But the pullback that we saw really has to do with what I just mentioned to you, Andy, which is when there is panic selling, when people are afraid, they dump everything. And so as in the last couple of weeks, we've seen the VIX shoot up. People have been scared because everybody piles into the Magnificent Seven. They all do the same thing. And when they crash, they all panic. And so there was panic in the stock market seen by the VIX. And as the VIX shoots up, we, we even saw the fear hit the gold market, pulled gold back. Yep. Uh, and so that, that's the problem is, and that's the problem with the bear market is even a good asset like gold, when there is panic, people don't care. When you're scared, you just, you run. Yep. And uh, so that's what that is. I think this pullback in gold is just kind of shaking things up. I do think gold has still got really nice upside potential. I think silver um, on the weekly chart as well has has a very nice upside. I think silver could be 36 or um, $38 um, uh, an ounce going forward. This has got a beautiful run to the upside. It's got a beautiful bull flag. It's flagging in the opposite direction of the trend. So the trend here was up. It's flag that. in the opposite direction. And then yeah. it should continue up to $36, $38 per ounce if, you know, if this panic selling dissipates and then we, we see that next leg up. And we're in that sweet spot for gold and silver, more so physical gold and silver, um, simply because they're not connected to the stock market. So if we do see the stock market top and can continue to sell, gold and silver are disconnected. They could actually still keep moving higher. And that's what we've seen in the past in this stage three topping phase. They can buck the trend and rally 5, 8, 10, 15%, while the stock market potentially falls 5 or 8%. And the gold miners, because they're stocks and they're stuck in the stock market, when the stock market is kind of falling, yes, gold miners should be going up with gold and silver, but there's natural liquidation going on in the stock market. So it'll mute the move up in miners. And I've been trying to let people know, like, I think the play, the safe, the safest, lowest risk play, I think, is gold. And then I think silver, and then you've got miners, uh, just because miners are stuck in that basket of the stock market. If it crashes, it's going to naturally want to pull the miners down with it. Yeah, I would agree. And I remember that in 2007, I want to say, is everything was puking. Gold actually did correct a little, but it was, um, and then it rocketed right up, but the miners just took a beating. So I would just be, all the listeners out there, just be very careful if you would, because miners are stocks. And if yeah. stocks are puking, it's more than yeah. likely they'll puke with the regular market. For sure. There, there's, we're, we, you could argue we're kind of in this phase kind of, and like potentially right here on gold miners, uh, where we are right now, they could potentially like go into, this is 2008. This is the 2008 yep. crisis where it sold off and broke down. Uh, if we kind of look over here at gold miners, I'll just clear this chart a bit and uh, uh, zoom out. This is a much larger pattern, but we definitely have this uh, potential uh, push high right here. And we, we can very easily see this pullback with the next um, major reset. Here was the COVID crash. You can see how much they crashed. This was the 2008 financial crisis. So it can be, they could get hit very, very hard coming back. But uh, just to go back to gold, Andy, real quick, the monthly chart is a really nice view of where we stand yeah. in the big, the big picture for gold. And I like gold because if we look at it compared to what we've seen in other, uh, during the other bull and bear market phases, we saw gold more or less break into a new bull market in early 2000s, had a multi-year consolidation, and then we saw a big run up just before the stock market sold, sold off and started the, the 2008 bear market. Well, we started a new bull market in 2019 for gold. We've had a multi-year consolidation. And now it's running up because people see, I think, music coming to an end. They're fearful. So this run up right 
here just before the state or bear market is, I believe, where we are right now. I think gold can still push quite a bit higher. This is a very big bull flag pattern pointing to 2650, 2750. And then what people need to realize is when we enter a bear market, we could very easily see gold potentially pull back even to the 2000 level, 2000 per ounce, very similar to 2008. Gold pulled back 34%. Yeah. And it's not a bad thing. It's just it, it's just the way the markets move. And then after that, once they, it does bottom, we should have that second half of that move. And that's where I think we're going to see, a, you know, 3,500 plus in gold and, and potentially way beyond that. Who knows how far it'll run after that. But yeah. that's kind of the scenario. We're just climbing this wall of worry. Investors around the world are piling into gold. They're worried about currencies. Again, they're always worried about the dollar collapsing. <laughs> of course, crazy printing definitely takes some value away from it. But mm -hmm. um, yeah. Yeah. No, that looks, that's a beautiful picture there, actually. Um, interesting. Uh, Chris, um, let's wrap it up here. How can people find you? And um, also... Um, Give us some final thoughts of what people should uh, be looking out for over the next uh, couple months before I have you on again. Yeah, I think um, I think the key for everybody to understand is there's a lot of turmoil in the markets right now. We're seeing money just slosh around from large caps to small caps, from risky stocks to um, uh, utilities. Like utility stocks are doing holding very well. Uh, right now, we're definitely in a turmoil. So, I, if I give anybody advice, I'd be like, just kind of step aside. And let's just see what happens over the next two months. And we're going to get an idea probably over the next few weeks or or month or two of like, is a trend going to start going higher again in the stock market? Or is it actually going to create a bearish pattern and then start to break down another leg potentially in a few weeks or, or a couple of months? So I wouldn't expect anything huge. I think you just need to be, uh, we're in that summer doldrums. It's naturally a weak time for the stock market and we're seeing weakness and we're just seeing chaos. So don't expect much. Go enjoy summer, I would say. Uh, and and liquidate some of your positions uh, in terms of equities because I think they carry a lot of risk here. Um, but uh, if people want to follow what I do, they can go to my YouTube channel, which is The Technical Traders. Um, they can go to my website, which is thetechnicaltraders.com, and I share videos and my analysis and um, interviews like what you and I are doing right now. Excellent. I will link to everything in the show notes. Chris, it's always a pleasure and uh, look forward to you, uh, having you on again here in the next couple of months. Sounds good, Andy. Always a pleasure. Take care. Thank you.